What can we begin to say about the relationship between human brains and animal brains? Uh, the first thing is to emphasize the continuity. Um, the similarities are so much more impressive, mm. actually, than the differences. Mm. Every area, nameable area, major division of the human brain can be identified in other species and you can follow its development through evolution. Right. The really distinctive thing about human brains is the size of the forebrain, the mm. cerebral hemispheres, the, you know, the mm. wrinkled bit on the, on mm. the top. Four times bigger area mm. of cerebral cortex in a human being than in a, than in a chimpanzee, so that's very significant. And it isn't just as if the growth and the expansion of the cerebral cortex has been like blowing up a balloon. Extra bits have been added. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the sensory areas of the human brain, the visual, the auditory, and the touch areas here, you can see those in a very simple mammal. But that's just about all there is mm -hmm. in the cerebral mm -hmm. cortex. In the human brain, those areas are a tiny fraction of the total, and lots of other stuff's been mm -hmm. added in mm -hmm. between. But what about animals that have larger brains than humans? I mean, you have elephants? You elephants, have... whales, whales can have brains twice as big or more. Sure, they they have smaller, dolphins. They have smaller numbers of nerve cells. Mm -hmm. The human brain has, in absolute terms, more nerve cells than any mm. other brain. Mm. So total numbers of neurons is important. Because mm. total numbers of neurons maps onto the total number of connections, therefore the total number mm. of computing um, elements. Mm. So let's take the key characteristic of, of the human brain, which is the large forebrain. Yes. There's been a massive extra expansion of, of the frontal lobes. You ask, what, is the, what do the frontal lobes do? They seem to be involved in, in planning, in regulating attention in um, long-term planning for the future, organizing behavior, both in the short time period and the very long time period. They seem to be responsible for what we, what, what, what's loosely called voluntary action, deciding when to do things and on what grounds, and making decisions about what to, what to do. And a good deal of that has an inhibitory function. Yeah, not unique to human beings. I mean, your pet dog presumably behaves yeah. itself pretty right. well right. in right. toilet training. Right. So, right. Right. you know, we can all learn these things. But you're right, um, frontal, frontal function, at least revealed by the effects of damage mm -hmm. to the frontal lobes, mm -hmm. seems to be at least in part inhibition of of impulse. Right. So the whole process of, of development in human beings, uh, whereas it may track how animals develop, mm. because there's a larger forebrain, that could have a dramatic impact on the output of the brain. Yeah. Well, you have to remember, of course, that you know human beings live a long time compared with most um, animals, and they spend an awful, awfully big part of their lives essentially continuing to mature and develop. Most animals have their, their development, cognitive and brain development, compressed mm. into a very short period of time. Okay. So there's much, much more time mm. for, for human beings mm. to, to learn, to, to form the new connections mm. that are involved in mm. learning, to modify their own brains. But when you get to our age, it's, it's over? Well, I you know, I hope it's still going on. <laughs> Don't you? I hope so. <laughs>